Hi, I'm Steve Atkin, Distinguished Engineer at IBM, and today I'm going to be showing you a demo that showcases how to connect to mainframe systems running ZOS and be able to access the mainframe through RESTful APIs. And first I'm going to go through a few slides just to get you uh, settled into what we'll be doing. So one of the big challenges that large-scale enterprises have is connecting to existing systems of record and being able to rapidly innovate and make use of the vast amount of data that has been stored on these mainframe systems. And what we're looking to do here is to roll out digital transformation so that we can have disruptive plays and be able to access these APIs from any particular cloud environment that we would like. So we're going to be explaining our demo through a user story. And this user story is centered around Cindy. And Cindy is a client of an automobile insurance company. And she wants to get information about her auto policy. And she's recently had a claim that she's put in uh, for her automobile insurance. And she'd like to be able to get real-time notifications about her claim and then find out when payment on her claim has been made. And in the past, Cindy has accessed the automobile insurance company's uh, calling service, and she's called in a number of times, and it often takes uh, quite a long time to get an answer to her question. And in the past, she's also used the website to find information, and it's been rather uh, cumbersome for her to navigate. So Cindy really wishes she could ask just a few simple questions with an agent on her desktop or phone. And while she's there, she might want to learn about how she could save money on her insurance costs. The demo we've put together is something we call the virtual insurance agent. So the virtual insurance agent is actually comprised of a number of pieces. But one of the most important aspects of this is through the user interface. And the user interface in this particular demo is constructed through a cognitive conversational bot powered by Watson Conversation. So what we'll be able to do is interact with this application using natural language text and be able to get answers to our questions. Now behind the scenes, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to be able to leverage mainframe data that's residing on ZOS. And we're going to do this through a product called ZOS Connect. And ZOS Connect is going to enable us to build raw RESTful APIs that can be accessed from any environment. Once we have those raw RESTful APIs, we're going to use API Connect and Secure Gateway to generate public interfaces that are secure that will enable us to access those RESTful APIs residing on the mainframe and collect the data that we're looking for. Then what we're also going to do is we're going to make use of blockchain. And blockchain is going to be used to manage the handling of our claims process. And once we bring these all together, we'll have a composite application that's driven through Watson Conversation all through a cognitive bot. Now let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into how we're actually going to build our RESTful API and make it available to applications. If we work from the left to the right in this diagram, over on the far left, you'll see we have DB2. And DB2 is actually running on the mainframe on ZOS. And we have an enterprise COBOL application, or it could actually be a Kix application as well, that accesses our DB2 database on the mainframe. Then you'll notice we have ZOS Connect. ZOS Connect runs on the mainframe as well and serves as the bridge between our mainframe applications and our cloud applications. And with ZOS Connect, we can create RESTful APIs that can access our COBOL applications, our KICS applications, and in turn, any data that we have in DB2 databases. You'll also notice moving to the right, we have Secure Gateway. Secure Gateway enables us to access the APIs generated by ZOS Connect and typically, the APIs that people build on ZOS Connect are usually behind firewalls. And Secure Gateway provides a mechanism for us to be able to securely and safely call into our applications through RESTful APIs that are running behind the firewall. Now, continuing off to the right, you'll notice we have some applications that are going to be put together here in Node-RED or Java or Node.js. And these applications will serve as the wrapper to the endpoints that we're publishing on Secure Gateway. And then finally, we have API Connect on the far right. And API Connect enables us to build our public interfaces so that we can securely and safely manage who can access our APIs, the frequency in which they can call them, and collect data and analytics about how our APIs are performing. So here's the virtual insurance agent demo 
running out on IBM Bluemix. To use the virtual insurance agent, all we need to do is type in natural language text, and then behind the scenes, our cognitive bot, built through Watson Conversation, will figure out what we're trying to do. So here, I can just type, find my claim. Now, I've already created a claim in the system, so I'm just going to ahead and put the number in. And it's just asked me to confirm what I'm looking to do. Now, once I've done that, a number of things have happened behind the scenes in this application. First of all, you notice this information regarding the policy. This information is actually coming from our mainframe environment through our raw RESTful APIs that we created, published with ZOS Connect, and secured with Secure Gateway, and managed through API Connect. You'll also notice a few other things in the virtual insurance agent. First of all, if you look to the right, we make use of the IBM Weather Data Service. Currently, there are no weather alerts for this particular policyholder's location, but if there were any, they'd be displayed in the box. Continuing off to the right, you'll see we have a map. This is built through Google Maps and is showing the location of the policyholder. And if we continue down, we can see there's a section for claims. So if we expand that, you'll see right now there's one claim that has been submitted, but it hasn't actually started to be processed. Now we're actually going to show how this claim actually gets processed. And we're going to do that through another application that we have called our claim payment system. So you can imagine the insurance company is using the claim payment system to handle how this claim is going to be paid. So what we'll do is we'll just put in the policy number in there and then we'll go ahead and enter our phone number for receiving notifications. Normally, we'd put the phone number in for the policyholder, but for this demo, we're just going to go ahead and put another number in. Then we'll click on Find the Claim. And this will bring up the claim information for us. Now we can go ahead and actually sign an adjuster to this claim. So let's go ahead and select an adjuster and click on Assign Adjuster. Earlier, I mentioned that we're handling the claim through blockchain. So we're actually managing how the claim is being processed and we're storing all the information related to how the claim is being handled through our claims handling process. And we're doing that using IBM blockchain. So here's the dashboard for IBM blockchain. And I just want to spend a moment or two to show you what's happening. So here you can see we're recording blocks on the blockchain. And if we expand the last one and kind of scroll over, here you can see we have information related to our assignment of the adjuster, and you can see the name of the adjuster and that the state is in progress. In another video, we'll be spending more time with blockchain, and we'll drill down into all the details about actually how you actually use the blockchain service, set it up, and actually integrate it into an application. Now, let's return to the claim payment system and continue processing the claim. So now let's pretend that the adjustment process has, a fin has finished, and now we're actually going to issue payment. And let's suppose in this particular case, we're going to issue payment directly to a bank. So go ahead and click on bank, and then in a moment here, we'll be given an option to select which bank we want to issue payment to. Let's choose Citibank, and then we'll click on Assign Payee. Now let's return to the blockchain service dashboard and see what we've just recently done. So we actually recorded a new block indicating that we've actually paid that claim. And if we look here in the output section, you can see here that Citibank has been paid and the state has now been marked paid. So now we'll return to the virtual insurance agent demo and let's go ahead and expand the claims section. And here we can see how the claim has been handled. So here you can see the claim recipient was Acme Auto Insurance, our adjuster was Justin Palmer, and then the financial institution that has been paid has been Citibank. Earlier, we said that Cindy wished she could get real-time notification of how her claim was being handled. And Cindy's actually able to do that. If we bring open the iMessage app here, here you can see there are a number of text messages or iMessages indicating how the claim has been handled. So now let's take a moment to recap what we did in the demo. So here you can see at the center our virtual insurance agent, which is running out on IBM Bluemix and it's able to access our core insurance policy information through a set of insurance APIs that we published using API Connect, securely connecting to our mainframe applications with raw RESTful APIs generated by ZOS Connect and securely managed through Secure Gateway. And then we were able to handle the claims processing system through the use of IBM Blockchain. And this entire application was driven through a cognitive bot 
using Watson Conversation. So thanks for watching this short video, and in future videos, we'll drill down to each of these aspects in greater detail.